Mary Jo, will you call the roll, please? Tom Murphy. Here. Kathy Pucci. Here. Tony DeMarco. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Colleen Gallagher. Here. Katie Gallagher. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Katie Gallagher is ill this evening, so she's excused. Kevin Tansky. Here. Okay, we all please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our first order of business this evening will be to amend our agenda. Um, we're going to be amending it to add Ordinance 2013-35 which is amending section one of ordinance 2010-11, establishing the registration fee for the day camp program within the recreation department. Um, we had some issues with how many hours part-time people are going to be able to work, and because our super sign up for our summer programs will take place this weekend, um, we needed to get this passed um, this evening. We're gonna be lowering the fee that we charge because the children will be in um, day camp a little bit less each day. So um, I need a motion to amend the agenda. Motion, motion to. Second. To amend the agenda, Tom Murphy. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Colleen Gallagher. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Okay, and then on behalf of Brooklyn City Council, I'd like to offer our condolences to the family of Mrs. Phyllis Swan. Mrs. Swan was a longtime resident. She was a devoted employee of the Brooklyn City Schools for 38 years and also an active member of St. Thomas More for over five decades. Her pride and joy, joy were her six grandsons, and she attended all of their events, whether it was um, athletic or academic. In any conversation with Mrs. Swan, she was always beaming with pride over the accomplishments of her grandson. She was really a great lady who will be missed. Okay, next we have approval of the minutes from our meeting of April 22nd. We need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. To approve the minutes, Tom Murphy. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Colin Gallagher. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Okay, next we have our public session. If anyone has anything to say for the good and welfare of the city of Brooklyn, please step up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and please observe the five minute time limit. <coughs> James Oper, 4823 Elizabeth Lane. On behalf of the City of Brooklyn School District Board of Education, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the citizens of Brooklyn for voting to pass our combined bond levy issue 13 on May 7th. Thank you for your continued support of the students in our schools. The victory in every single precinct is a convincing victory that is proof positive that our entire community wants to provide our students with the opportunity to succeed in an environment worthy of our children. Thanks to all of you who walked, talked, called, worked, cooked spaghetti, ate spaghetti, folded, counted, held a sign, danced the shake, and on and on for this campaign. I would also like to take this occasion to thank Mayor Balbeer and Councilpersons Tony DeMarco, Kathy Pucci, and Colleen Coyne Gallagher for their support as well. It really took every single one of us to communicate the <coughs> needs to our voters, and we are so grateful for your help now and in the future as we continue to grapple with the budget. Our work grows in intensity now. There will be planning and design meetings scheduled for both the building and the renovation of the athletic fields. Rest assured, we will be evaluating all expenditures and be good stewards of the finances. We will continue to evaluate programming and provide those options that best serve our students in the 21st century. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything to say for the good and welfare of the city of Brooklyn? Okay, we will move forward to reports of committees, commissions, and boards. Um, this evening, the Finance Committee uh, began our meeting a little bit earlier at 6.15 this evening because we had a lengthy agenda. <coughs> and the Finance Committee did recommend uh, adopting everything that we have on our agenda this evening. And when those are read into the record, I will elaborate on the details of the, the, uh, those pieces of legislation. 
and um, I'm the representative to the Economic Development Committee, so I'll give that report also at this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Economic Development Committee met on May 8th. Um, there is a company that operates a foundry, and they are interested in space at 8500 Clinton Road. This is the Weston property. They would occupy about 57,000 square feet under a 15-year lease. Uh, this is the former space that uh, was occupied by Blonders. Um, it's not finalized yet, um, but it does look hopeful. There is a property on Parkside Drive that is currently in the county land bank, although the city is cutting the grass. The land bank recently put up a sign, so we're going to check and see why they are not maintaining it. And the mayor was also going to check with Mr. Verba to see if the city was using this as a place to push the snow onto in the winter. This basically is at the end of the street and it drops off down towards the um, I-71 area. There is a house on Idlewood that was a foreclosure and it may be coming up for sheriff's auction. We have been unable to get the bank to maintain this property and it's in extremely bad shape. It actually has to be torn down. We will pursue this, and um, I suggested that um, possibly we could turn the piece of property into a community garden uh, once the house and the garage are raised. There are some residents on Glencoe who are interested in purchasing some of the city property which is behind their homes on Bidoff Road. The committee wanted more information as to how many residents had serious interest. Um, initially, we heard that there were eight residents, but now it may be only three. Why they want it and what their intentions would be. We also decided that selling the entire parcel up to or even anywhere close to bid off would be out of the question. Um, there's also a gully on this property that has to be protected. So we deferred any action pending more information and Fran and Mr. Fitzgerald um, are going to do some more investigating on this. Right. The Tiedemann Road ramp project will begin mid-June and be completed in November. There will be two lanes added to each ramp, so there will be a total of four lanes on each ramp. Our turn lane project onto I-480 West from Tiedemann is on NOACA's tip list and scheduled for approval for July 1st. We are responsible for putting the plans together, then ODOT will let the project. This will also involve repaving 450 feet north of the bridge and 250 feet south of the bridge. The federal appropriation will pay for 100% of this project, and ODOT will be responsible for administering the project. Associate Avenue. The State Controlling Board approved um, our Ohio Department of Development Jobs Ohio funds. The project was scheduled to be advertised on May 9th with a completion date in November. We need to work with budget engineering on a small part of their property that we will need for this project. Uh, the administration intends to launch a marketing campaign at the mayor's breakfast for the businesses for the business community, which is now scheduled for Tuesday, June <coughs> 11th. Uh, Fran is taking on this task and is working with Jill to develop a PowerPoint presentation outlining this uh, process. We will schedule a work session of council to review this presentation, hopefully in the next couple weeks. And we are asking council members to assist again this year with making follow-up phone calls for the breakfast. So please let me know if you're able to help this year. And that completes my report. Um, next we move on to recreation, Mr. Tansky. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. The next recreation board meeting is scheduled for Monday, May 20th at 6.30 p.m. in the mayor's court. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, next is Planning Commission, and because um, Councilwoman Katie Gallagher is absent this evening, the mayor will give the report. Uh, the Planning Commission met on May 2nd. There was two items on the agenda. The first one was a request from Brilliant Electric Sign Company to install a sign panel replacement and update the current freestanding sign located at Memphis Kitty Park, 10340 Memphis Avenue, and that's permanent parcel number 431-06-005. I think that sign's been up there forever. Now they're going to put a new one up, and it's a big clown on the top of the sign. 
The second item was a request from Global Signs and Graphics to install signage for business identification of Good Sense Grocery and More, and Sense is spelled C-E-N-T-S, Good Sense Grocery and More, located at 4798 Ridge Road, permanent, permanent parcel number 433-07-008. And in case you're wondering where 4798 Ridge Road is, that's Value King. So they've been there one year and the name's changing already. So it's going to be called Good Sense Grocery and More. And that's all I have. <coughs> okay. Um, that completes the reports of committees, commissions, and boards. So we'll move on to council reports. And this evening we begin with Mr. Murphy. Uh, thank you. Uh, congratulations, of course, to the uh, school board and the people that worked hard to pass their uh, pass the levy. I wanted to thank both Mr. Fitzgerald and Acting Chief Knapp for their assistance in a couple of the complaints I had in the past three weeks. Uh, your response was quick. Thank you very much. Uh, and I do want to remind the people of the Memorial Day Parade, uh, which is on the 27th. Uh, you know we have it, uh, a ceremony at uh, West Park Cemetery and then a parade to follow. And that's all I have. Okay, next is Mr. DeMarco. Hey, as uh, was previously mentioned, uh, I would personally like to extend my condolences and those of my family to the uh, Swan family on the passing of uh, Phyllis Swan. Uh, my mother worked with her for over 30 years, and, and she was a dear family friend and a fixture at Brooklyn High School who will be sorely missed. Um, there are many happy residents, school children, levy supporters, etc. last Tuesday evening. I'd like to congratulate all that were involved in the levy effort for our schools that successfully passed, a levy that I supported. I know this is a significant financial commitment for every property owner in the city, one I hope will serve our residents and students for many years to come. Let's work with one another to ensure that this is not an issue that ends up dividing our community, but rather one that brings us together. <coughs> I do have some general comments on ordinances 2013-16 and 2013-17, which were passed by a six to one vote at our last council meeting, which authorized the issuance of $1,375,000 in notes for street repairs, repairs to buildings and other capital improvements. As uh, some of you may recall from last year, the same issue was a very contentious one among council members, one in which the same council last year did not authorize the issuance of such notes for similar capital purchases, even with the recommendation of our finance director and our banker from Key Bank. I supported the issuance of notes last year and again this year. Several members of council have changed their position this year on, on the issuance of notes, a change that I would suggest is significant I'm unsure of the reasons for the change, but I am relieved to see that a majority of council residents understand the importance <coughs> of an appropriate capital structure for the city as we face serious near-term challenges to our financial position. Mr. Van Kirk was the lone no, the lone no vote on these ordinances at the last meeting and was also a leading opponent of the issues of is issuing notes last year. At the last council meeting, he recommended that we establish a sinking fund, and I guess somehow this will solve our problems. Uh, don't let these unfamiliar phrases fool you. A sinking fund is not a new concept. It's actually a fairly simple concept that's been around for hundreds of years. We currently have several accounts that are funded from our general fund, including our capital fund, our rainy day fund, etc. To create additional funds for debt repayment is both impractical and inefficient. The other simple question is, how do we fund these sinking accounts? The simple reality in Brooklyn is that we should be doing everything we can to build the balances in our general fund and rainy day fund to help us deal with the unforeseen events. Some of these events are not so unclear. Uh, finally, I did meet with the mayor last week to discuss a variety of items, including economic development. Uh, unfortunately, the mayor and I disagree when it comes to economic development. Earlier this year, he indicated that he would consider hiring a full-time person to assist our current economic development director in our efforts around this. In our meeting last week, he indicated that he is currently satisfied with our economic development activity and will not be pursuing any additional employee for this very important activity. I wholeheartedly disagree. Ignoring the realities of the issues facing our city is no way to lead. Neither is hoping or planning on what ifs 
potential new businesses coming to Brooklyn, et cetera. I don't know if anyone has taken a drive down Clinton Road recently. It's about a one mile stretch in the northern end of our city that basically is a ghost town today. To attract tenants and building owners to this area will take effort, planning, and time. There may be some things on the horizon that could benefit our city, but why, we, why wouldn't we consider making economic development a mainstream focus for our city, just like our safety forces and services are? I'm not suggesting that we utilize my ideas, but I can certainly tell you that by standing by and doing nothing, that is not, not a recipe for success. I certainly do not think it is what the residents expect of their elected officials. In fairness to every resident, you should be aware that we currently have no contingency plan in place to deal with any serious adverse circumstances that we may encounter, such as a departure of a large employer. <clears throat> I guess we'll just deal with that situation at the time that it presents itself. Certainly not how I would handle something as important as this. With all this being said, the mayor is our elected leader, so I will respect his decision, even though I strongly disagree, disagree with him on this important matter. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Van Kirk. I have no report. Mrs. Colleen Gallagher. Good evening. Thank you to all the residents who supported the school <coughs> levy. I'm sure the students and school administration appreciate your help in these tough economic times. Also, I had the opportunity to attend the Drug Awareness Night at the Brooklyn School Auditorium. My thanks to Superintendent Cynthia Walker and Mrs. Bobinchuk for addressing this huge problem that continues to be a public health crisis. Also to the speakers, you did an outstanding job. Unintentional drug overdose dose continues to be the leading cause of injury related death in, in Ohio, ahead of motor vehicle traffic crashes, suicides, and falls. Um, and my condolences, condolences to uh, the family of Phyllis Swan. Um, Mrs. Swan was a great individual, and she will be sadly missed. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Tansky. Thank you. Good evening. I also would like to thank, I also would like to congratulate the school board on the passing of their levy and all their hard work and their campaign. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, as Mrs. Gallagher mentioned, um, we had our Community Awareness Night on May 1st. I would like to personally thank the guest speakers, Sergeant Eschweiler, Detective Fry, and Acting Chief Knapp, who represented the Brooklyn Police Department, Assistant County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley, the Honorable Judge David Mattia, and uh, Ron S., who is a recovering addict. Each of these guest speakers provided important insight and information on the growing problem of <coughs> substance abuse and opiate addiction. I would also like to give my heartfelt thanks to Kathy and Maggie Baird, who shared the story of their son and brother, Brett. Brett was a 2003 graduate of Brooklyn High School who died of an overdose a year and a half ago. After the presentation, I was able to speak with other Brooklyn families who have suffered similar losses. It is heartbreaking for these families, and each one shared that while they struggle to deal with their loss, they want to try and prevent another family from going through the same thing. And I want them to know that I admire them for their courage and strength. We collected surveys from those who attended, and we are in the process of compiling that information. The Awareness Night was just the first step in educating students, parents, and the community as a whole about this growing epidemic. And it's going to take all of us coming together as a community to ensure that we are addressing these problems and that we are supporting families. The Safe Routes to School Committee met on April 23rd. The main focus of the meeting was the final planning and preparations for the bike rodeo. Walking Wednesdays are now every Wednesday. Last week was Bike to School Week. They will have a group in the Memorial Day Parade. And in the next round of funding, there were grant applications for $30 million, and there were only $8 million in funding available. Word has gotten out about this program that we've been involved in for several years now. So what's happening is a lot more communities are um, applying for these funds. We have not received an answer yet on whether um, we were awarded additional funding for the next round. The bike rodeo was Saturday, May 4th at the high school. This event was a huge success, teaching students about bike safety, registering bikes with our police department. 
We had about 150 people. We raffled off bikes that came with helmets and locks. And I'd like to thank everyone who helped, especially the members of the community and Sergeant Eschweiler and Officer Mark Murphy. The Community Improvement Corporation met on May 10th. Uh, we did receive two offers for the property at the corner of Memphis and Ridge. One was for a family dollar store, and they offered $50,000 for the property. The second one was for Faith Christian School and Daycare. They offered $65,000. After lengthy discussions, the members voted unanimously to reject both offers. It's not enough money for the property and not desirable projects for a property that is at the entrance to our community. We discussed the status of the lease by Hugo Boss for parking on our property on Tiedemann Road. And there's a resident on Shady Lane who has expressed interest in purchasing some of a lot that's adjacent to his home. This lot is currently in the Brooklyn Land Bank. This property was taken into the land bank because it, um, it is under the first energy easement and it is designated as a priority route for our trail and neighborhood connector project. The committee voted to defer any action pending further information <coughs> as to the lot size and the amount the resident uh, is interested in purchasing. Regarding the passage of the school levy, um, last week Brooklyn residents voted to approve the additional funding for both operating funds and for funding new facilities and improvements to existing facilities. I know this will be good for our community as a whole. One of the number one things that home buyers look at is the strength and support of the school system in a community. Even if you don't have children or you don't, your children do not attend the public school system, the value of your home is directly tied to a strong school system. This project will provide income tax to the city, or I'm sorry, income to the city via permits and income tax paid by the construction workers. But more importantly, this will demonstrate that our community is committed to providing appropriate facilities and the necessary support for a strong school system, and that we believe that the children in our community and we are willing to provide them what they need to succeed. The commitment that we have shown will go a long way in attracting new homeowners to our city, which is something we desperately need. And that completes my report. Next is the mayor, Mayor Belbeer. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Uh, the Senior Center would like me to uh, extend their uh, gratitude to everybody that attended their pasta dinner. It was sold out and it was a great success. I also attended the awareness night and I wanted to thank the police department. They had a very good showing. Uh, the city hall roof is coming along and hopefully it'll be done by the end of the week. Uh, we had a little problem with the fumes for a while, but. Uh, Hopefully that's over with and that the weather is what controls everything. So it should be done by the end of the week. I also attended a meeting of the First Suburbs Contortium of Northeast Ohio. The main topic once again was at House Bill 5, that's a municipal, municipal income tax bill. And we passed legislation to hire a consulting service. service. So in other words, we're hiring a lobbyist to, rec to represent us in Columbus. We're paying half of the bill in our sister company in uh, in uh, Toledo's paying the other half, so at least we'll have somebody down there watching out for our interests on a day-to-day -day basis, and that should be a big help. And I also want to congratulate the school on the passage of their levy. And as Mr. Murphy said, the uh, Memorial Day Parade will be Monday the 27th. It starts at 11 o'clock in front of the high school. It goes east on Bidoff to Ridge, then north on Ridge to Memphis, and then Memphis to the City Hall where the program will start. On April 26th, it was Arbor Day in Brooklyn. We had the third graders here from Brookridge, St. Thomas More, and the Cleveland Baptist Church. We came, they came to the city park and we had the teachers plant a tree and each child was given a pine tree to take home. Uh, I'm also gonna meet with the third graders from Brookridge again. I do this each year near the end of the month to discuss government. About 1% of the questions have to do with government, but I, but I go there anyway, it's always fun. Uh, and our last thing was a message from the Laurel Garden Club. They're gonna have a speaker from Kurtz Brothers speaking on the benefits of composting and that'll be tomorrow night at the fire station at seven o'clock. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Next we'll move on to the director's reports and this evening we begin with Mrs. McGinty. Good evening. 
Our super sign-up registration will be held this weekend, Saturday, May 18th, and Sunday, May 19th, from 11 to 1. We will be registering for the Learn to Swim program, Learn to Skate program, soccer, swim team, and day camp. No baseball registration will be taken at that time. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Finance Director, Ms. Essere. Thank you. I wanted to talk this evening because I received a great email from Rita on May 6th. Um, the Regional Income Tax Agency, also known as Rita, announced that they launched, launched a new website that was redesigned to better serve taxpayers and tax professionals. Some of the key updates were included were the replacement of tax identification numbers with unique identifiers for access to the online system. There's a lot of people that come in and talk to us about safety, so this was great that your tax identification numbers and social security numbers, now you're going to have a unique identifier so you don't have to put that online. Also, there's an introduction to the My Account function, which expands Rita's services to include the status of refunds and the ability to manage passwords, email addresses, and security questions. The launching of the website supports Rita's commitment to serving taxpayers in a professional, courteous, and responsive manner. At your convenience, if you'd like to go to the new website, you could go to www.ritaohio.com. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next is Service Director, Mr. Verba. Thank you, Council President Pucci. Uh, I'd just like to remind the residents that um, special pickups are on Fridays only. Um, anything that does not fit in your um, container must be put on the tree lawn for a Friday pickup, and you must call 216 635 4232. Um, we just don't randomly go down the streets. We don't know if it's out there or not. You must call ahead to arrange for pickup, and then we'll pick up those extra items on a Friday. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, um, we have a letter from Mrs. Miglarino. The City of Brooklyn applied for funds to upgrade the parks and recreation area of the city through the Cuyahoga County Community Development Block Grant Program. Council approved the resolution 2013-2 to move forward with this application at the March 25th, 2013 meeting. On April 24th, 2013, the city was notified by the director of the Department of Development <coughs> of Cuyahoga County that we were awarded a 2013 municipal grant for $150,000. In order to move forward in a timely manner with the playground structure upgrades and the basketball resurfacing project, I'm requesting that you authorize the city to accept the $100,000 $150,000 grant award at the May 13th, 2013 council meeting uh, to comply with the 2013 reimbursement schedule. So we need a motion to accept the grant. Who do accept? Second. To accept the grant, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colleen Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. And thanks to Mrs. Miglarino and also uh, Ms. Ludwig who worked on the grant application. Next, we have a request for disposal of a fixed asset. Dear Mayor and Members of Council, I am requesting permission to dispose of our non-working RICO AFCIO 2232C copier that was used in the police department. And then it goes on and it states the serial number. Parts are no longer available for this model and the unit is beyond repair. The hard drive on this unit has been properly disposed of and all data has been removed. Sincerely, Sergeant John Knapp, Acting Chief of Police. We need a motion to authorize the disposal. Motion to authorize disposal. Second. To authorize the disposal, Tom Murphy. Yes. Kathy Pucci. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Colleen Gallagher. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Next we have Ordinance 2013-18, that's up for third reading and adoption this evening, amending sections 1360.16b and e, license application form and fee of Chapter 1360, Property Maintenance <coughs> and Rental Licensing Code of the City of Brooklyn Codified Ordinances. And this raises our licensing application fee from $50 to $100 and also raises um, the late fee to $100, or establishes a late fee of $100. We need a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Second. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colleen Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Okay, next is Ordinance 2013-20, which is also on for third reading and adoption. 
amending section 1361.05, occupancy permit fee of chapter 1361, occupancy permits of the Brooklyn codified ordinances. This raises our occupancy <coughs> fee um, from $25 to $75. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Next is Ordinance 2013-26, which we will pass by emergency measure this evening, authorizing the mayor to enter into agreements with Emergency Communications Network, LLC, to provide Code Red and My Daily Call services for the City of Brooklyn. And this is the emergency notification system. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Next is Ordinance 2013-27, which is on second reading this evening. Amending Section 1345.01, Fee Schedule of Chapter 1345, permit fees of the Brooklyn codified ordinances and these are the various fees that we charge uh, for permits and uh, construction uh, remodeling and so forth so that is on second reading this evening ordinance 2013-28 is um, up for emergency passage this evening amending section 1 of ordinance 2004-9 adopted February 26 2004 providing for fees for the slap shot hockey program being offered <coughs> at the Brooklyn Multi-Purpose Indoor Recreation Center. Um, currently, we have a range for residents of, uh, excuse me, children who are residents of between three and six dollars per single section, and for non-resident children between four dollars and seven dollars. And then we have a range for adult participation residents four dollars to seven dollars non-residents five dollars to eight dollars we're establishing one fee range that will be somewhere between ten dollars and fifteen dollars per single session introduced by all suspend the rules second to suspend the rules tom murphy yes kathy pucci yes tony demarco yes ron van kirk yes colin gallagher yes Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Next is Ordinance 2013-29, which will be passed by emergency measure, authorizing the purchase of various equipment for the weight room at the John M. Coyne Recreation Center through the Domino Trust Fund. And this is not to exceed $29,300, and this will be payable out of the Domino Trust. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2013-30, which will be um, up for emergency passage this evening, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Civil and Environmental Consultants, Inc., CEC, <coughs> Inc., to provide additional services for the sanitary landfill in the amount of $6,450. Um, we need to respond um, to a letter and also provide some updated drawings um, for our composting area at the landfill. So we need to um, pass this by emergency this evening. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2013-31, which is also up for emergency passage this evening, to provide for the policy governing the maximum hours worked for part-time employees for the city of Brooklyn. And um, basically, when the Affordable Care Act kicks in, um, or part, more parts of it kick in January 1st of 2014, um, there's a requirement that entities who have workers that work an average of 30 hours per week that the employer has to offer health care. 
Well, we have many part-time employees, some are seasonal, some are not, and the city cannot afford that. So we are establishing, effective July 1st of 2013, that part-time employees may not work any more than 29 hours in a one-week period. So um, there's a look-back period that kicks in effective January 1st, so we're being proactive in this. Um, there is, contained in Section 3, classification legal department that there's an exception to this policy with regard to quote special class of employees who consist of the law director magistrate and prosecutor these three positions will continue to have health insurance medical and dental offered and do not need to work a minimum of 30 hours per week to continue their eligibility and we have to pass this by emergency this evening introduce by all to spend the rules second to suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2013-32, which is up for emergency passage, authorizing the purchase of various equipment for the weight room at the John M. Coyne Recreation Center. And this is the balance of the equipment which will be paid for um, from city funds. Introduced by all suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Ordinance 2013-33, up for emergency passage, authorizing the purchase and installation of ancillary equipment to the newly purchased police vehicles. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. And for the record, that amount was $14,050.19. Ordinance 2013-34, which is up for emergency passage, <clears throat> authorizing the purchase, purchase and installation of additional equipment for the video service and wireless cameras for the police department. Um, this is $736.60. Um, we need a dedicated computer for the um, surveillance system. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. <coughs> Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Uh, Ordinance 2013-35, which is up for emergency passage, amending Section 1 of Ordinance 2010-11, establishing the registration fee for the day camp program within the Recreation Department. And um, we're going to change the range um, the new range will be for resident children. It'll be between $215 to $250 for the six-week program. And um, let's see, the range for students who attend a school in the city of Brooklyn, but they do not reside in Brooklyn, will be from $275 to $320 for the six-week program. Introduced by all, suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. To adopt, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. And um, I would like to announce that because our next regularly scheduled meeting would fall on Memorial Day, um, we have provisions in our rules of council that we meet the next day, which is Tuesday, May 28th. So that'll be our next council meeting, Tuesday, May 28th. Um, does the mayor or any members of council have something they'd like to say? Yes, I have a couple items. Uh, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock at the Senior Center is coffee with the mayor. The seniors request I do this once a year, and I meet with them, and they I bring the most of the directors will be with me and will answer any questions they have about the city of Brooklyn. So that's tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. 
Also, I met with the Cleveland Water Department, and they want Brooklyn to sign a contract. This contract's been in existence to, since 2007. Less than half the cities have signed it, but they've made some changes in it. So uh, I want to explain it to council. So we'll probably have a work session in the next two weeks if we have a special meeting. If we don't, it, we'll have this work session at the end of the next council meeting, but it'll be advertised. And that's all I have. Okay, anyone else? Okay, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. To adjourn, Tom Murphy? Yes. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Ron Van Kirk? Yes. Colin Gallagher? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Thank you. <coughs>